Welcome to today's presentation. Today I like to talk about Brendan Dassey. In April of 2007 he was aged 17 years old. He was sentenced to life in prison for first degree murder, second degree sexual assault and mutilation of a corpse. His alleged victim was Teresa Hallbuck. In today's presentation, I want to examine Brendan's confession and ask the question, was it fact or was it fantasy? The point that I want to discuss was Brendan's confession actually based on the best-selling book or film Kiss the Girls? Here is a copy of the book and it was published in 1995 and it was made into a film in 1997. Brendan underwent many interrogations. His very first one was done on November the 6th, 2005. Uh, this was a report written up by Detective O'Neill. After that, he was interrogated by two investigators. The first one was Special Agent Thomas Fassbender he was part of the Division of Criminal Investigation, Wisconsin Department of Justice. The other one was Investigator Mark Wiegert from Calumet County Sheriff's Office. Brendan underwent many interrogations. He underwent two on February the 27th, two on March the 1st, and another one on May the 13th and some of these interrogation sessions went on for many many hours furthermore Brendan did not have his mother present nor an attorney when both Fassbender and Wiegert were interrogating him let's have a look at just part of Brendan's confession Fassbender. Okay, and tell me and think. Think about the video in your head, okay? You went back in the bedroom and go through what happened again. Brendan. We went in there, we tied her up, and he stabbed her. And he told me to cut her throat and cut her hair off. And then... We were done like that. We took off the handcuffs and we took her outside to the Jeep, stuck her in the back. He said he would rather burn her than stick her back in there and we put her on the floor and then he shot her 10 times and then we threw her in the fire. The question is, is Brendan's confession actually fact or is it pure fantasy and notice with all the uh, interrogation uh, quotes I give the CASO reference so you can go back and read the original reports if you wish all right so Brendan was arrested and a trial took place and here we have the state of Wisconsin versus Brendan Dassey jury trial day 7 April 23 2007 he was questioned in part by special prosecutor Thomas J Fallon look closely what he says question what book that you read ever had the story of a woman chained to a bed raped by two raped stabbed 
and then her body thrown on a fire. What book was that, sir? Brendan answers, I believe it was called Kiss the Girls. Question, all right, who wrote the book? Brendan, I don't remember his name. So what is interesting here is that Brendan specifically states a book. Kiss the Girls right here. So the question is, did Brendan actually read this book or could he have possibly seen the film? Let's examine Kiss the Girls a little bit closer. As I said before, could Brendan have actually have read this book or seen the film? Well, it just so happens that both the book and the DVD are available at the Manitowoc Library. But more importantly, the film was shown on TV in Wisconsin on October 20th, 2005. That's just 11 days before the disappearance of Teresa Holbach. And we found the clipping from a newspaper and you can see that the actual film was shown in Wisconsin. So that's very interesting. Both the book and the film were available for Brendan to either read the book or see the film. And I would like to put forward the notion that Brendan likely saw the film. Let's have a look and walk through Brendan's so-called confession. If you read the interrogations, what stands out is that Brendan told many different versions of what he saw and did on October the 31st, 2005. Case investigators Fassbender and Wiget used the following main points from their many interrogation sessions to construct a single narrative about the restraint, torture, rape, murder and burning of Teresa Holbuck. These are the main points that the investigators were able to uh, ascertain from Brendan's confessions. 1. Brendan went to Stephen Avery's trailer and was invited inside. Brendan saw Teresa shackled with handcuffs and leg irons on Stephen Avery's bed. Brendan sexually assaulted Teresa. Brendan used a knife to cut some of Teresa's hair off. Take note of that particular part of the confession. Later it becomes very important. Brendan used a knife to cut Teresa's throat. Brendan assisted Stephen Avery to bring Teresa into the garage where she was shot 10 times by Stephen Avery. Brendan assisted Stephen Avery to place the deceased body of Teresa into the burn pit and watch the remains burn. It is important to have a look at the so-called crime scene where all these horrendous events allegedly took place. Here we have a photograph of Stephen Avery's trailer. And here we have a photograph of Stephen Avery's bedroom. Uh, these photographs, by the way, were, taking, were taken several days after Teresa was reported missing. In Stephen Avery's bedroom, Teresa Holbach was allegedly restrained to the bed, sexually assaulted, choked, had part of her hair cut off, throat cut and stabbed. The other part of the crime scene took place in Stephen Avery's garage. 
Teresa Hobart allegedly was moved into the garage, stabbed and shot 10 times by Stephen Avery. After her death, Teresa Hobart was thrown into the fire by Stephen and Brendan and her corpse was mutilated. So note, these are horrendous crimes that have taken place. The question is, did these crimes really take place? Or is it all fantasy? When Brendan was um, in his interrogation sessions, he was asked to draw certain drawings. He was asked to draw a series of pictures detailing what he saw and what he and Stephen Avery allegedly did to Teresa Holbach. These drawings are actually critical. They reveal critical details in regards to the analysis and validity of his confession. And we can ask, are they based in fact or fantasy? Let's have a look at the first story. Fassbender. Describe again. Were you accurate when you described how she was on the bed? How is she attached? Where is she? Tell us that and be truthful again. Brendan. That she was chained up to the bed and uh, she's faced up. Fassbender. Face up. No clothes on. Brendan. Shakes head. No. Uh-uh. We get. What do you mean she's chained up? Explain that. Brendan. Like some handcuffs? We get. Where are the handcuffs? On her arms? Or on her legs? Or where? Brendan. Both. Brendan. Also stated to us that Teresa's arms were tied to Stephen's bedposts. However, they were tied with rope, not with handcuffs, as he had previously indicated. Brendan stated that her legs were shackled with leg irons to the bottom bedpost. So note, Brendan has already made changes to parts of his confession. They're not consistent. We get, why don't you draw out the bedroom? Put the bed on there and show me where the dresser and everything was, the best that you can, and where the door was and all that. So Brendan drew this diagram showing Teresa Holbach shackled to the bed. Fassbender. And what did he use to stab her? Brendan. A knife. Fassbender. Where did he get the knife from? Brendan, from the kitchen. Fassbender, what did he use to cut the hair off with? Brendan, the knife. Brendan, cut her. We get, cut her where? Brendan, on her throat. Which we get, which knife did you use? Brendan, the same one he stabbed her with. We get, why don't you do that? Draw me the knife. So Brendan drew the knife in which he used to cut her throat and also to cut part of her hair off. Please take note of the shape of the knife. It's very, very distinct. We get, then what did you talk about? What else did you talk about? Brendan, that how he was going to get rid of it. We get, and what did he tell you? Brendan, that he was going to burn her. Fassbender, when you say get rid of it, what do you mean? Brendan, get rid of her body. Fassbender, okay, we get, and he says what? Brendan, that he was going to burn her body after that happened. We get, was there anything else that you guys talk about? 
Brendan shakes head. No. Fassbender. So all the body parts were pretty much connected. Then when you saw the toes, which means they were probably connected to the feet yet, correct? Which means the feet, foot is connected to both the legs. So I'm just going to ask this question. You're saying that you've seen body part. You're pretty much, you're seeing a body. Is that accurate? You saw her body in there? We get. Would you say yes or no for me, Brendan? Brendan, yes. So he was asked to draw Teresa in the fire pit. And notice the body that he draws is all intact. A whole body. Now, here is the film Kiss the Girls. And we're going to compare this to Brendan's confession. And the question we want to ask is this. How closely does Fassbender and Wiegert's constructed narrative, which came to be known as Brendan's Confession, mirror the strong adult themes of the film Kiss the Girls? Let's have a look at the main points. Restraint to a bed by the hands and feet, hair cut off, and note this only was mentioned in the film. The use of restraining devices, knife to the throat, sexual assault, victims and fire. Now, I'd just like to let you know that I saw the film several times. I also read the ebook. So I've got a very good idea of um, what occurred in both the film and the book and the major differences. The major difference is in the film it shows the hair being cut off a victim. This is not mentioned in the book. This is good evidence I believe that Brendan likely saw the film rather than have read the book. Okay, let's have a look at these different elements. The first, restraint of victim to bed. In the film Kiss the Girls, there are vivid images of a victim lying in a bed. She has both her hands tied to the bed and her legs are also restrained to the bed. In Brendan's confession, he draws out Teresa Hobart also shackled with her arms and with her legs in the bed. And notice he even drew in the pillows where Teresa's head was laying on. This is exactly what you see in the film Kiss the Girls. Let's have a look at cutting off hair from the victim. In the film, there is a vivid scene in which the detective picks up a clump of hair that has been removed from a victim. And as I stated before, this scene was not mentioned in the book. Yet, Brendan mentioned several times that he had cut part of Teresa's hair off. This was actually quite stunning. The detectives asked him several times, why did you cut off part of her hair? And Brendan had no idea or no response. I don't know, is the only thing that he said to them in regards to cutting the hair. If you notice in Brendan's confession and the drawing he did, he actually put hair shown on the dresser, as you can see right here. So 
he obviously thought about it and it was important enough to place on his drawing. The use of restraining devices. In the film, you can see the detective looking at a victim that had her hands tied to a tree in this particular case and her hands are bound by rope. Also, there were many images of restraining devices that were shown in the film. In Brendan's confession in the drawing he did, you can see that Teresa was restrained in the bed, both by her arms and by her feet. Let's have a look at the kitchen knife. In the film, there are many images of knives. And the interesting thing is, is that we get asked, okay, what color was the handle? Brendan, black. And then look at the comparison of the knives shown in the film and the knife he drew on his drawing. They are almost identical in shape. Fassbender, where did he get the knife from? Brendan, from the kitchen. And notice in the Kiss the Girls film, the knives were predominantly shown in the kitchen. Knife to throat of victim. In the Kiss the Girls film, there are many vivid images like this, where a knife, a large knife, is held to the throat of a victim. Brendan, cut her. We get, cut her where? Brendan, on her throat. And again, we show the image of the knife. Apparently, he used the same knife to cut Teresa's throat as he used to cut part of her hair off. Sexual Assault and Rape In the film Kiss the Girls, there was definitely images of a sexual assault taking place. The actual book is much more uh, gruesome and there are scenes of rape. So in the film there are definitely images of sexual assault. In Brendan's confession, Fassbender, did, did you have sex with her? Yeah. We get. How long did you have sex with her? Brendan, about two minutes. We get. Why did you stop? Brendan, I don't know. Victim and fire. Now this one is an interesting one. Because in Kiss the Girls film, at the beginning, there are many images of female victims shown engulfed in flames. In Brendan's confession, he drew Teresa Holbach being thrown into the fire pit. Okay, let's compare the scenes shown in Kiss the Girls and compare that with features of Brendan's confession. Let's start off with the Kiss the Girls. We have a white female shown restrained in bed by her hands and feet. We have images of shackles and restraining devices. We have attempted sexual assault. A knife is shown held to the throat of a victim. We clearly see images of a kitchen knife with a black handle. Hair is cut off one of the victims. Some of the victims were murdered. And the film also shows a depiction of victims shown in flames. If we directly compare this with some of the features of Brendan's confession, we see that Teresa 
was allegedly restrained in bed by her hands and feet. Handcuffs and leg irons were found in Stephen Avery's trailer. Teresa was sexually assaulted. A knife held to the throat of Teresa and was cut. Kitchen knife had a black handle. Teresa had some of her hair cut off. Teresa was murdered. Teresa was burnt in the fire pit. As you can see, all the major points in Kiss the Girls are exactly the same as those of Brendan's confession. So as you can see, we have a female restrained in a bed. We have images of shackles. We have sexual assault. We have a knife held to the throat of a victim. We have a large kitchen knife, one of which contains a black handle. We have hair removed from one of the victims. And we have victims shown in flames. By comparing these strong images, was it possible that Brendan simply was remembering aspects of the film Kiss the Girls? Okay, let's summarize. Everything that Brendan said about the alleged crime was depicted in the film Kiss the Girls. Brendan spoke about many different things during his interrogations by Fassbender and Weget, features of which were used by the prosecution as Brendan's confession. The big question is this, was Brendan's confession false and coerced by case investigators Fassbender and Weget? Normally in a crime, there is some form of forensic evidence that's left at the crime scene. I want to read a direct quote from Attorney Fremgen, which, was, which occurred during Brendan Dassey's trial. But I don't believe you'll hear evidence about Brendan Dassey's DNA you won't hear the same evidence involving Brendan Dassey. There won't be, take note, any DNA, no blood, no saliva, no sweat, no hair, nothing, no fingerprints, no science that's going to point you to Brendan Dassey, not the science that points to Stephen Avery. But again, this is Brendan Dassey's trial, not Stephen's trial. It's about a 16-year-old boy at the time. It's about a 16-year-old high school student with below average cognitive abilities, a fourth grade reading level, a low IQ. It's about a shy, introvert, socially inept, suggestible child that's what this trial is about. So there was no forensic evidence of any of the crimes being committed in Stephen Avery's bedroom. None. And believe me, the investigators tore the bedroom apart. They took the wood panelling from the bed. They took the carpet that was on the floor. They also took a vacuum cleaner. They did not find any evidence of any sexual assault or crime having taken place inside Stephen Avery's bedroom. But here's the issue. At age 17, Brendan Dassey was sentenced to life in prison for these horrendous crimes. 
first degree murder, second degree sexual assault, mutilation of a corpse. And keep in mind that all of this was based on a confession. And the question is, was this confession fact or fantasy? And as I've already stated, there was no forensic evidence at all of a crime having taken place inside Stephen Avery's bedroom. What is interesting about the film is that there are many other scenes shown or depicted in the film which are relevant to the case in question, but not necessarily related to Brendan Dassey. So here are some of the scenes which are shown in the film. There's a wall depicting many missing female victims. The FBI uh, and other investigators are on the crime scene, but I want you to take note of the last two uh, pictures. Apparently what one of the uh, killers was doing was taking photographs of his victims and uploading them on the computer and sharing them. I'll just leave you with that thought. This is the end of my presentation and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, during the uh, preparation of the presentation um, I used a lot of original documents shown here which you can of course go to and have a look at your leisure and finally I'd like to thank Bron very much who assisted me greatly in the preparation of this presentation